pictures uh, of burnt children and burnt bodies uh, where the United States have used white phosphorus, which is against international law, but they have used it, and they have used the uh, depleted uranium, and Dahar Jamal had went in there and actually did uh, a, a, an, an excellent documentaries, and he has been going back and forth there. So let's hear the Democracy Now! Uh, interview with Dahar Jamal recently. The most recent statistic I'll end with before I get into Fallujah and what these images are showing is that in 2005, we saw 1,600 Iraqis with cancer out of 100,000, so a massive escalation that continues. And going on to Fallujah, because I wrote about this a year ago and then I returned to the city again this trip, uh, we are seeing uh, an absolute crisis of uh, congenital malformations of newborn. There is one doctor, a pediatrician named Dr. Samir Alani, working on this uh, this crisis in the city. She's the only person there registering cases, and she's seeing horrific birth defects. I mean, these are extremely hard to look at. They're extremely hard to bear witness to, but it's something that we all need to pay attention to because of the amount of depleted uranium used by the U.S. military during both of their brutal attacks on the city of 2004, as well as other toxic munitions like white phosphorus, among other things. And so what this has generated is from 2004 up to this day, we are seeing a rate of congenital malformations in the city of Fallujah that is surpassed even that in the aftermath of, uh, in the wake of uh, the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that were, uh, uh, that nuclear bombs were dropped on at the end of World War II. So uh, Dr. Samir Alani actually visited with doctors in Japan uh, comparing statistics and found that uh, the amount of congenital malformations in Fallujah is 14 times greater than the same rate measured in the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in the aftermath of the nuclear bombings. Uh, these types of birth defects, she said, there, there are types of uh, congenital malformations that she said they don't even have medical terms for, that some of the things they're seeing they've never seen before, they're not in any of the books or any of the scientific literature that they have access to. Uh, it's, she said it's common now in Fallujah for newborns to come out with massive multiple systemic defects, uh, immune problems, uh, massive central nervous system problems, uh, massive uh, heart problems, skeletal disorders, babies being born with two heads, baby being, babies being born with half of their internal organs outside of their bodies, cyclops babies literally with one eye, uh, really, uh, really, really horrific nightmarish types of birth defects, and, and it is ongoing. And, and she, uh, lastly, to really give you an idea of the scope of the problem is that this is, this is happening now uh, at, at a massive rate, and she said, her being the only person cataloging and registering cases with no help from Baghdad, who is denying that there's some sort of problem like this in Fallujah. She said that she could, she could probably safely estimate that the number of cases as high as the rate that she's seeing could probably be doubled because so many people are having their babies at home and just taking care of it. You know, they're, they're, most of these babies are being born dead and then they're not reporting it whatsoever. So this is an ongoing crisis and the rate uh, is, has not increased since last year, but it's not decreased either. It was still, when I talked to her last year, it was 14 times a, a, great, a, a greater rate of malformations in newborns as compared to the aftermath areas of, of the nuclear bombings in Japan, and it's the same uh, when I spoke with her about this one week ago. Uh, Najima, do you know, has any U.S. government official ever publicly acknowledged that the U.S. used depleted uranium in Iraq? And what does international law say about the use of depleted uranium uh, in wartime? The Pentagon has admitted to using several hundred tons during the 91 Gulf War. Uh, it's hard to get official figures from them from this this uh, current, uh, the most recent war, where certainly they've admitted that it was used, but we, it's, you know, figures range anywhere from a, another couple of hundred tons upwards to 800 tons. Uh, there's been no official statement that I've seen anyway from the Pentagon uh, uh, talking about the effects of these weapons either on the Iraqi civilian population or members of the U.S. military who use them like the person in the clip that you played earlier. International law is very clear. 
about these types of weapons, any weapon that is known to have a lasting uh, negative impact on the civilian population in the general area where it is used is technically a banned uh, or a, a highly restricted weapon. And in this case, these types of weapons should not be allowed to be used. Uh, as I reported back in 2004 when it came out that white phosphorus was indeed being used in Fallujah, that's another restricted weapon where the Geneva Conventions state very clearly that if, if there are any possibilities possibility of any civility, civilians in the area where it is going to be used, it is not allowed to be used. So there, it's, the Geneva Conventions are very, very clear about these. And this brings up a broader point about the war, uh, as we heard uh, early, in an earlier clip from Michael Moore talking about the illegality of the war. It's good to hear this uh, brought back into the discourse. Uh, another uh, individual, Robert Jensen, wrote an extremely poignant piece about the illegality of the war. Okay. Um. <clears throat> You know, we, as a country, we caused that. We caused that. I don't know what to say. Every time I talk about Iraq and about how the people in the United States were conned to go to war against a country that did not do them any harm, did not attack it. Iraq did not attack the United States. It did not do nothing. And we still look at George Bush as being a good president. The murderer, the one who conned, now of course he was not the one who conned, the United States, I mean the people in the United States. He was nothing but a hired hand for the people above him who were planning all this. Don't feel special because the Arab people are in the same boat. There are powers beyond and above the governments that you see in front of you. And these powers are playing the people of the earth. These powers control money. These powers control the economy. These powers control the politicians on this earth. That's how bad this world is. So let's not feel special that you did not know because you know what? If you were following us from the beginning, you knew it was a lie from the beginning. When the rest of the country, when the rest of the country were celebrating the troops going back and forth, and they still do, they still do. But in a democracy like ours, the people should have spoke. The people should have spoken against this war but they did not. So the responsibility of those pictures that you are seeing, it falls on the shoulders of the people of the United States. Not just the government. Because there's nothing worse for a country as an ignorant citizen. Nothing worse. An educated Knowledgeable citizen is a big asset for the country. Now, you've seen what we have done in Iraq as a country, as America, as the United States of America. The civilized, the pretty, the nice. You see how ugly. Now, they knew what weapons they were using. And they knew what was going to happen. But it doesn't matter. Because this war was for Israel to start the dominoes of what you are seeing of what happened in the other Arab countries, of what happened in Libya, and what is happening in Syria, what is happening in Egypt, in Yemen, in Sudan, in Lebanon, everywhere. We are nothing but pawns in their hands with nothing but pawns in their hands. Now, uh, we do have a couple of short clips. 
Now this here, it's back in 2006 when I was much younger, and you are going to actually, and also the technology actually at that time, uh, what we had in the studio, um, I wanna say it was primitive technology, but you know what? It was working and we were able to put out uh, some good, good programs out of the uh, old technology. But uh, when I'm gonna talk about technology now, uh, the, what you're going to see now is an interview that I did back in 2006 with uh, Doug Rocky, who was the product, uh, the project director uh, for the Pentagon, the cleaning job after Iraq war back in 1991 when we invaded, well not invaded, when we went and destroyed the Iraqi army back then for invading Kuwait. They sent Doug Rocky, he was the um, project director for the cleaning job for the depleted uranium. And then when he saw what happened then, and he got sick himself, and he saw that many of his troops actually got sick, and uh, he started speaking against the United States military that used that back in 1991. Imagine 11 years later or 12 years later, we used the weapons that he said, don't use it, it's horrible. But we used it in Iraq, in Fallujah. Let's go to my uh, interview with Doug Rocky back in 2006. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are speaking with uh, Doug Rocky. Uh, Doug, is this, I mean, you know, we went after Saddam Hussein for having a weapon of mass destruction. Which he didn't have. Which he did not have, but we did. And we That's used correct. it. Correct. Um, I mean, well, we are supposed to be the head of the civilized world, and yet we go to a country that did not do us anything, and we use depleted uranium, which is basically a weapon of mass destruction, and, and their babies are going to be born uh, deformed for probably thousands of years to come. Um, is this against international law? I mean, is there anyone who's going to um, say, look, United States, you did wrong? I mean, is anyone working on this deal to, to make it right? Can we ever make it right? Well, the United Nations Subcommission on Human Rights, through the work of uh, um, an incredible lawyer by the name of Karen Parker, who's uh, from California and then uh, worked with the you know, on this issue, yeah, you know, they passed it years and years ago. The uranium munitions were illegal, but again, it's just common sense. You have to understand, uranium munitions are solid, radioactive, chemically toxic materials. You could not even legally dispose of one pound of uranium, depleted uranium or uranium munitions, at any place or any location within the United States or other civilized nations. And that the United States has taken thousands upon thousands of tons and dispersed it throughout all over the world and including in the United States and literally refused to clean up the contamination that they're required to do by their own orders and regulations and they refuse to provide the medical care that they are required to do by their own orders and regulations. Uh, the toxicity of uranium munitions is given. I mean, prior to Gulf War uh, II, uh, Colonel Edgar J. Wakiyama briefed all the senior leadership of the Pentagon on uranium munitions. And I'm reading this briefing right now, it's very clear, quote, the alpha particle taken inside the body in large doses hazardous producing cell damage and cancer. Lung cancer is well documented. It's exactly what we've seen. The beta particle is hazardous to the skin and the lens of the eye. That's where we had all of the rashes and the uh, eye damage. And I just, I had surgery earlier this year for specific all the eye damage, they finally fixed it after many, many years of problems. Uh, Colonel Wakayama went on to continue to brief the senior leadership, and this you know, includes Secretary Rumsfeld and all the generals. Uh, that is, DU is chemically toxic. It's like eating lead. Target organ is a kidney and the bone. What it does is there's decalcification. So you not only have decalcification of the bone, like oste osteopenia and osteoporosis, but then obviously your teeth are all decalcified and they just fall out and break off, which has happened to us. 
uh, urine samples containing uranium are mutagenic, as determined by the Ames test. The cultured human stem bone cell line with DU has also transformed the cells car car carcinogenic. There's all the leukemias. And then in addition, we have all, all of the other chemical toxicity effects, effects of neurological.